So anyway, the to start this lesson, uh, I said uh, we we had a little illustration about if you hold a hand a royal flush in your hands, and the royal flush is of the suit of spades. What would be your response? How much would you bet on that hand? And most of the people here in the Sunday school class said, I'd go all in, or I'd bet everything I have. If that's good, if you're playing poker, if you're playing, uh, playing cards. But the object lesson or the lesson there is to say that we need to be, have that same attitude when it comes to this, learning to, and you can write down, you can make a note on here, learning to plead, learning to plead the promises of God. Rick, I don't know if that will pick up, yep, it will. if it'll pick up the whole thing. Learning to plead the promises of God. And uh, we, what we want to do is, we're going to cover some scripture today that reaffirm or re remind us about why we can go all in with God. And the thing is on there, when we say, and I, I want to give you a definition uh, of plead, right? And when we say plead the promises of God, it's not begging. Now, it's going to, it is an emotional thing. It's a whole hard thing of all the emotion. But really what that is, is I want you to think about this. When, when we talk about pleading the promises of God, it's a petition. A petition requesting an action. So when we say pleading the promises of God, we're talking about we are going to petition God and request action. We're going to request him to act on what he has promised. So uh, often we think of pleading as somebody begging, and in the heart it's, Man, I, I, I'm hopeless, I have no hope, I'm, a, I'm filled with fear, I don't know what else to do. And so it gets to the, a, a point of where it would be said as begging. That is not the mindset that we, when I say we want to plead the promises of God, we want to make a p petition requesting the action on the promise of God. So... When we, when we do that, when we pray or when we request or we petition God for something, we want to do that based on, in other words, we need to remind ourselves, we need to remember what, is the, what God's character is. So the first verse we want to do that to reinforce this pleading the promises of God is I want you to open your scripture, if you will, to Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, right? 19. Whoever gets that, somebody gets it, go ahead and read it out loud. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall be not to do it, or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That is the foundation. Numbers 23, 19 is a great, great verse. When, when, you, when we talk about pleading the promises of God, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and will he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and will he not make it good? Or shall he not make it good? What God has said, what we have recorded for us in the scripture, in the Bible, that's a fact. We can take that to the bank. If you have... That is your poker hand. God has the winning hand. We can count on that from the scripture, from his word. Therefore, when we take a petition or request, we're requesting God to take action. 
We're asking him to, Lord, you said, you promised. Therefore, God, I can count on you. I am banking on you. I'm counting on you to fulfill what you've said because you said you're not a man that should lie. You're not a, you know, the son of man that he should repent. Okay, so the foundation of pleading the promises of God or, or praying the promises of God, uh, standing on the promises of God, we can say it different ways, right, is that fact of who God is, his character. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and will he not do it? Or hath he spoken and will he not make it good? Okay? Uh, there's an illustration, another illustration that is a great verse to build your faith on and to remember who God is and, what, and about what he said. So let's go now to Jeremiah 33, 19 to 26. Now, the second one is Jeremiah 33, Jeremiah 19 to 26. We'll break this down into a couple parts. So whoever has it there. Give me about three. Yeah, the first 22 through 20, or uh, 19 through 22. 21, 20. So God promised, said in his word, these things. Now, can you break his covenant with a day or night? Can we change day and night? Right? So it's in the negative. He goes to the negative side on this. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man hath he said and will he not do it. This one goes to the, onto the negative side and says, can you? Well, if you can, well, then my promise is null and void. If you can do that, but we can't. No man can do that, can break the covenant that God has made. Go ahead and with the rest of that now and finish it out on the, the passage out through 26. <clears throat> Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Have you not considered what these people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord has chosen, he has also cast them off, lest they have despised my people, as if they should no more be a nation before them. Thus says the Lord, If my covenant is not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take so I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captives to return and will have mercy on them. Yes. Illustrations, those are biblical illustrations from the Old Testament of the surety of God's word, of God's promise. We see that fulfilled in the New Testament in Christ. That promise of an eternal king, the Lord Jesus Christ, fulfilled in that. But God uses that as an illustration. Those are to reaffirm, to build our faith, to ground our faith in what he says, so that when we come with our requests, when we make petition, requesting God to act on his promises, we're knowing this by faith, our faith is grounded in what he has said in the word of God. Good? We're good with that? Any questions so far? Uh, yes. Comment. In the King 
King James, it says, uh, Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. Uh, and the New Living says, it's as sure as the laws of the earth and sky, that govern the earth and sky. I mean, you know, we think of all the natural laws, like uh, gravity. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, entropy, entropy, all these natural laws that we see at work. And God is saying, I ordered those. I made those. Those are my laws. That's the way I set this up. The earth spins. It rotates around the sun. It does all this. I put that all in order. And I've done the same for David and his descendants. Right. It's that sure. We don't even think about the sun coming up. No. Well, the sun doesn't come up, right? Right. <laughs> right, right, right. But we right. say it does. The sun doesn't set, the sun doesn't rise. It's the laws of nature, the way God set this up. That's the same way with David's throne. It's that sure. It's that sure. God has the winning hand. It's this sure. <laughs> it's that sure. It's on that basis that we're pleading. We're not, we're not wringing our hands. Oh, I wonder if God's really going to answer my prayer. Is it? It's not from fear. It's that. It's from the confidence that we have. We have to build our faith on that. God, you said, I believe it, right? I believe it. Therefore, I'm asking you. I'm simply, and it's an entreaty. We're not demanding. We're not trying to twist God's arm. Uh, it, it's, it's Pardon? recognizing, and if you will, a lawyer in court pleads the case, and if the person is innocent, they're pleading with the court, but they're pleading the facts. They're, if they're doing it properly, and it's just and right, then this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth, these are the facts, and it's on the basis of the law. It is lawful, it is just, it is holy, and it is right altogether, right? So when we say that word plead, that I... Mm -hmm. And if we believe this what we've read here, what we've talked about just now, then we need to know whatever the answer is, is right. It's a right answer. We can trust right it. Answer, mm -hmm. trust that that is, That's correct. We want that answer or not. That's right. It is the right answer for us because God would not answer it in a wrong way. That's correct. And if you look at what Jesus taught the disciples of pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And so we ask God according to his promises that we have, we ask him on that basis, with full confidence in him. The, uh, uh, now, there's an interesting verse. We're going to move out of the Old Testament. We're going to go to the next one, the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Uh, it, it's a passage, but we'll focus on verse 20 out of 2 Corinthians 1, 20. You're smiling, Pastor. Am I taking something that you're... That's no? good. Whoever has that. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the all amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. To the glory of God, right? So when our faith or when we, the basis of prayer, all of these promises, every promise that God has made, the condition, it is conditional, it's a promise, but it's conditional in Christ. It's yes and amen. That's important to understand. The promises of God apply 
in Christ. That in Christ relationship, through his birth, his death, his burial for three days, according to Scripture, and his resurrection, right? When we place our faith in that gospel, that good news, that God places us in Christ, not only places us in Christ, but seals us, identifies us to the world, identifies us, sealing us with the Holy Spirit of God, right? We are in Christ. Then, all the promise, all. How, read, read it again, would you, Peach? Pete, I, I call her. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And, and so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. We know all the promises of God are fulfilled in Christ. He fulfilled them. By him fulfilling it, as Ed's favorite Verse, we are imputed the righteousness of God in him, right? He has imputed the righteousness of God to him. All of those promises fulfilled in Christ accrue to us, accrue to our account. So, our, and, and again, I say that it's just when we pray, it's on the basis of what are we praying on the basis of? Our confidence, and this is faith, this is the assurance of what we have hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen, right? We're basing our entreaty, we're basing our petition on the promise of God, but with full faith and understanding that Christ fulfilled that, we are in him. Therefore, it's yes, it's not maybe. And the first thing in this passage that's important here is Paul was talking about the gospel. If you back up, as Tom would say, back up 20 verses, well, you don't have to go quite that far back. But the context of this, 2 Corinthians 1.20 was about the gospel. It's not, well, yes and no. It's not, well, I'm not sure. Well, it, it, it is yes. We can put our full confidence in God, who has the winning hand. He proved it when he raised Christ from the dead. The resurrection proves Everything we're talking about here, that's the proof that we have. So, I say all of this background here, all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus uh, to the glory of God, right? And the answered prayer that we have to those promises, it's to his glory. That's important to know. When we pray, God answers in the affirmative, yes, to his promises, to his glory. It brings glory to God. So in our asking, in our entreaty, in our petitions, when we pray the promises of God, when we plead the promises of God, we know that he's going to give us an affirm. We already know what the outcome is because he is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, will he not do it? Hath he spoken, and will he not make it good? We already know what that outcome is going to be on that promise. And so, our, our and, and, and the real motive behind it, we can say amen to it, because we know it's going to glorify God. He's going to glorify himself, because he's going to answer according to what he has promised. I like what you said there, Frank. Um, that Second Corinthians one twenty. Every promise of God is yes in Christ, but it's amen to us. Amen to us. We say amen. Yes. What's amen mean? Yes, good, yes. So be it. So be it, right? Literally, it means so be it. So every promise, we're just saying, so be it. That's right. Hey, God, so be it. Go ahead, Ed. Please do, yes. 21 and 22. Yes, that was 20. Yes, that was 20. Right, 21 and 20.
Absolutely guaranteed. We know it. We have the Holy Spirit in us who lets us, by the Spirit, know these things are so. Rick, you had a comment, too. Well, so, are you ready to kind of wrap it up? I am. The thing I, I think we could really wrap this up with is Evelyn's comment. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I don't know the rules. Mm. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could bet this hand or not. I just don't know. Isn't this the trouble with? <laughs> I said, isn't this the trouble when Evelyn goes? I don't know the rules, right? This is the trouble with a lot of people in Christianity. They don't know the rules. They don't study their Bibles. They don't know that every promise is yes in Christ and amen to us. They don't know that God is not a man that he should lie. They don't know that there's every, this, this is a royal flush. They don't know. That's why we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why, because we can't be holding a royal flush going, eh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a, a dollar? <laughs> Maybe a dollar is what I'll bet. But that's what most people do. Oh, I'll, I, you know, I'll go to church on Sunday if it's not a family day. I'll, I'll follow God, but, you know, I don't want to be too crazy. I don't want to be all in. Right. Right. But also the fact that all of us have the royal flesh. That, that that's the thing. We all are filled with that. In Christ. In Christ, yeah. we have the royal flush. Yeah. People don't know all, that. But all of us have. All of us and, and she said, "All of us have a royal, the royal flush." Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we all got the one in hand. So just to just to wrap this up, uh, where where I'm going with this is is in our prayer times, we need to become more people who were. Praying the promises of God. We're pleading the promises of God for, the, for whomever that we're praying for. Yes, we pray for the healing, but it's on the basis of what he said in his word. Yes, we're praying for their salvation on the basis of his word. On the basis of what he has promised, we know what that outcome is. We know it's an, a yes, and we say the amen to that with our... And it's not with a heart of... You know, wringing our hands and wondering if it's with the confidence, because God said it, it's his promise. I know that. I know what that promise is. I am entreating God. I am petitioning him, requesting an action. God, we're, we know God is going to act, and we know what the outcome of his action is going to be. So, anyway, I, I shared with you briefly before, this is a testimony. I wanted to put this at the end of the teaching, just to say <clears throat> that there's a man I mentioned to you, Armin Geschwein. And Armin learned how to plead the promises of God from an old man named Whaley, last name of Whaley. And Armin Geschwein says, when I was 24, he was 73. He lived to be 93, and with an eagle look in his eyes, he said, Young man, learn to plead the promises of God. Young woman, young woman, young man, young man, boy. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> the old man, the outside man is perishing, but what's happening on the inside? We are being renewed every day. We are eternally young in the Lord, in Christ, right? So I say young ladies, I don't see a young girl here, young ladies, oh boy, <laughs> young man, young men, let us learn to plead the promises of God as this man said. <clears throat> That did it. My praying has never been the same since. 
That word completely changed my understanding of prayer. It really revolutionized it. I saw it as soon as he said it. Saw what? Well, when I prayed, there was fervency and ambition, etc. cetera. Uh, but I lacked faith. The Sunday school lesson today is to stir our faith by reviewing, and I'll be only, as a pastor once said, I'm only reminding you, <laughs> right? I don't know who that is, but anyway. Prayer is the key to heaven. Faith unlocks that door. There must be faith. Faith in the living God. Faith in what he has said in his word. Knowing that it's absolutely trustworthy. When the, uh, where does that come from? Well, that faith comes by hearing. Where do we get the hearing? Word of God. By the word of God. That's right. Uncle Am, that's the old man, would plead scripture after scripture, reminding him of, reminding him, not the young man, but reminding him, promise after promise. He would remind him of that, pleading these like a lawyer does his cause. The Holy Spirit pouring in his assurance of being heard. There it comes, the Holy Spirit assuring us that we know that what we've pled, knowing the case that we've pled, Lord, you said, the Holy Spirit saying yes, and the Holy Spirit really in us saying amen. It's the, by the Holy Spirit we say the amen to that as we plead the, those promises. This man knew the promises by the bushel, he says. He did not seem to need those two Bibles in the hay. He had two open Bibles on two piles of hay, and he put his old gnarled knuckle hands on there. Am, uh, Am was a was a, Uncle Am was an old blacksmith, retired blacksmith, and gnarled hands and stuff. But he didn't really need to do that. But he had those bushels of promises in his heart, right? And uh, he he prayed using the Word of God, the Bible, as the basis on which his prayers were built. He taught me the secret of intercessory praying. No, no, it's not even the substance. Okay. How can I ever thank God enough for leading me to such a prayer warrior? What happened with this discovery, God really gave me a new Bible. I had not yet learned how to make the Bible my prayer book. It gave me a new motivation for Bible study. I began to dig in. I began to search the scriptures. I began to look for those promises. He began to, you know, what has God said? What are those promises? What can I pray? And uh, it wraps up here with that. There are thousands of promises, a promise for every need, every burden, every problem, every situation. Young man, young woman, all of us, right? Learn to plead the promises of God. God has the winning hand. It's a royal flush. Every one of us have that. We have the winning hand. We can go all in. I just encourage you, by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, go all in. Don't hold anything back. Trust Him completely. Rest of, that's what we want to have, is that faith unfeigned, love from a pure heart, right? Love from a pure heart, faith unfeigned, and a clear conscience, both toward God and toward man. Okay? That is Sunday school this morning. So, uh, Daniel 9 is an example of what Frank just said. You want to see a petition requesting action. Um, a, a literal example of a man praying the word of God back to God. Daniel chapter 9. So, uh, you know, in, in Daniel 9, Daniel understands by reading Jeremiah that they're out of there. Been 70 years, they're out of there in like three. So what does he do? He starts packing his bags. Yes, action. So, he starts praying, praying, and he ends with, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. act. For your own sake, do not delay, O oh my God, for your people in your city bear your name. 
For your own sake, for his glory, right? Face it right back to God. <laughs> yep. You said 70 years, you do it. <laughs> so, uh, Brother Bill, would you close us with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly 